Oh, there's the box. This is it. So this is the article in question, eh? Is it? The small box deposited with the pawnbroker by Mr. McGilda two months ago? And on the night on which, on, on the night on Mr. Windybank's murder, the only item on the shelves that was touched by whatever, by whoever broke into the shop. Quick, quick, let's open it and see what's inside. Is this a music disc contraption? Good gracious, this is no ordinary box, it seems. Wow. Although in truth, I had an inkling that might be the case. It would appear that the box house is a miniature music box movement. Then, is it too much to expect? I think it would be re I think it would be reasonable to assume that this device is for the playback of this disc, my lord. So, here we have the means to play Mr. McGilded's disc, deposited at Mr. Winniebakes at much the same time. Not strictly correct, my lord. It was not Mr. McGilded's disc. It was the disc of his victim in the omnibus. But why, for heaven's sake? Are we to understand that the brickmaker was trying to sell this music box disc to Mr. McGilded? I believe the answer will become clear if we listen to the music on the disc, my lord. Yes, very well. Let the court now listen to this cu curious disc at last. Wait, my lord! Good grief! What is the meaning of this, Inspector? This music box and the disc are, um, they're, well, they're unrelated to the case. Dude, Gregson, did you do something? No, no need to spoil the somber atmosphere in the courtroom with some silly bit of music. Objection. This disc may very well have motivated the culprit in, the, in this case to commit murder. Clearly, there's every chance that it's fundamentally important understanding what's happened. The prosecution has no objection. But, but no, the piece of evidence is police property now, you can't. Clearly Scotland Yard has some vested interest here, but it's policy of the, but it is policy of this prosecutor to leave no avenues unexplored. And you, inspector, have no jurisdiction here to prevent that from happening. Gah! No further delays, please play the disc. Interesting. What, what on earth? It's certainly not what I would call music. No. It's just the same note playing over and over again in an irregular sequence. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Graydon? This, this really is priceless. <laughs> After all that, the music box is broken. Or broken? It can't be, can't be, can it? Well, obviously, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the officer sent to fetch it didn't drop it on the way back to the courtroom. Well, with much regret, I feel the court must accept that this music box offers little in the way of clues. Are you ready to move on, Council? Come on. Yeah, alright. It does sound as though it's completely broken, but... Is it? Could this music and man rating for the music box possibly be a new clue? Well, it has to be, right? But what evidence do I have? I'm already saving two seconds into the trial. You know, I don't care if you see my... If you don't, I don't care if you see my save file this time. I'm usually kept quiet about it until now. Just so you don't know how long ago I did this, but you know what? It's the end of the game. You know, might as well. I believe that it could be relevant, my lord. Good lord, but but how can it be? It's an abomination, Council. <laughs> Mere noise. I fail to see how it could be any meaning whatsoever. It does sound strange. I agree. But there's one thing bothering me. 
while Graydon stands there chortling victor victoriously. The inspector besides him has a rather telling expression on his face. As if Gregson recognizes the sound if he's familiar with it somehow. And that makes him appear extremely on edge. If that's the stance of the defense, my Nepanese friend, answer me this. Oh. Don't ask for proof, please. <laughs> Just what relevance do you propose this woeful chiming has on this case? So the defense belief that the sound emanating from this music box is... Is it Morse? <laughs> uh, uh, definitely not supposed to be music. Just because this is a music box, it doesn't necessarily mean the sounds we're hearing are music. Look at that. The smile vanished from Graydon's lips as soon as I said that. I'm on the right lines here. I must be. Hee <laughs> hee, making deductions based on how people react to what you say. You're acting like you're acting just like Hurley, Reno. Objection. The sounds we're hearing aren't necessarily music. Well, now that you tell us what they're not. I'm sure the Corps would like to hear what they are. Do enlighten us, my Nepanese friend. Well, um... Surely you have an idea in mind, because if not... It will be the death of your ill-informed ill argument. Exactly. The music box is clearly broken. Refusing to accept that fact is pure foolishness. They've got me. I don't know what the answer is. Yet. I'm Runo. I just examined the music box very thoroughly. And I'm fairly certain that it's not broken at all. Really? Really? That way it's been made. We can only produce a single note anyways. Thank you, Iris. Alright, well if the muse box isn't broken, it must be mean that the sounds it's producing have some significance that isn't musical. Ah, could it be? Is this what this, these sounds are? I don't know what he's talking about, boys, I'm lost. <laughs> Something that struck me, Runo. I feel like recently, in the past few hours even, I've heard another sound very much like this one this music box makes. Yes, yeah, it's a familiar sound. Actually, Iris, I was just thinking exactly the same thing. Is it Morse? <laughs> That's about we have a we, we have a communications officer. I'm going to have to press the defense for an answer. Uh, if your assertion is that the sound produced by this music box is not in fact music at all, then what the devil is it, Council? All the evidence we've seen so far, all the testimony we've heard. It's all pointing at one single answer now. The prosecution demands that my learned Nepanese friend present proof now. Tangible proof of his latest wild speculation. Okay, uh... Alright then. These could be the last chance I'm getting to fight back in this trial. And if I'm right, I'm gonna join all the dots together. Am I? Am I? The evidence that explains the true nature of the sounds on this music box dis- Oh no. Uh, is he the hounded up after real? Is he the <laughs> Alright, if we believe that it's a Morse code thing, then here we go. <laughs> this is about the only thing that manages to mention Morse. Today's newspaper, Council. The headline is Pawnbroker Parishes in Pickpocket Pick Purse Plunder. Hardly supportive of your case. Uh, my lord. I was hoping you'd look at a little further down the page. Further down? Ministry Mole? Classified secrets may have been leaked overseas for Minister of Justice. Yes, it's very cool. Oh, that's why Gregson is mad about it, because if it's played, someone might be able to get the information, because it might actually be Morse. It's a very serious matter being investigated at the highest level, I understand. I have heard that international transmissions along supposedly secure lines are somehow being intercepted. 
and leaked to various other countries. And presumably, those transmissions are in the form of wired telegrams? Of course. Jury number five, your input, please. Stop. Oh, me, sir. Whatever is the matter? You told the court before that you worked at the same communication station, Mr. Graydon, did you not? Y yes, that's correct. And the particular station where you work deals with government communications and newspaper reports? Oh, yes, uh, we're not a run of the mill communications system station at all. Our work is extremely important. Then tell me, is this not a very familiar sound? Hmm? You don't mean to say, is it? That's right, madam. There is more than a passing resemblance to the sound made by your telegram, telegraph machine as you type it. I believe it's called Morse code? But I don't believe it. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but when it comes to leaking telegrams from government departments, there could be nobody more perfectly placed than a highly skilled communications officer. Are, are you suggesting that the music box disc contains stolen government secrets in Morse code? In Morse code? I forgot to deepen it there, my bad. Order, order, please everyone, order. But this, this is high treason council deserving of capital punishment. So much new vocabulary. What is this treason and what is capital punishment? The sort of words I half expect you to know. <laughs> For a sovereign government, confidential information, hostile nations will surely pay almost any price. Yeah, and on that night, two nights, two months ago, that was the very negotiation that was taking place inside the omnibus. But in the end, Mr. McGill had perished, and the all-important disc lay unclaimed in the pawnbrokery. My word. In which case, whoever stole that information in the first place must surely have been beside himself with worry. Because if the disc were to be discovered before it found its way out of the country, it would be revealed as a high act of treason, punishable by death. So the culprit had no choice but to retrieve it. In, other in order to do that, he would have to gain entry to the pawnbrokery illegally in the middle of the night. Because the article left behind by Mr. McGilded would incriminate him too much if he got into the wrong hands. Isn't that right, Mr. Graydon? You, you think you've been stealing government? You think I've been stealing government secrets? Preposterous, absolutely preposterous. So in response to the defense's accusation, you claim complete innocence, do you? Well, of course I do. I've had to stand here in silence while the pretentious foreign lawyer has been prattling away. Objection. Then by all means, counter the charges, sir. Has baby Rach Van Zykes finally got over it? The prosecution demands that the witness testifies in response to the allegations, accusations brought by the defense. My bad. Delighted, I'm sure. The, the witness is reminded that the crime under scrutiny in the trial is the murder of the pawnbroker, Mr. Wendy Bank. That being a most flagitious offense for which the law of this land sanctions the capital punishment. But the heinous act of high treason is no less serious a crime. I urge you to bear that in mind as you testify, Mr. Graydon. Hold it. Oh, what was that? Um... So then let's proceed, you may... You gotta let us have a rabbit in a pork here, Governor, and we got things to say. I, I beg your pardon? Who, who do you think you are? Name's Nash Skulkin, occupation is a professional baddie. Name's Ringle Skulkin, um, but we ain't baddies enough to sell out my own, our own motherland. That's right, we've what they call... The Three Skulkin Brothers. <laughs> Bad timing, fellas. Very bad timing.
Oh my god, so the, they want to be there too? This is so weird. A mere communications officer couldn't possibly steal confidential government government information. Besides, the sound produced by that music box aren't even Morse code. It was some low-class brickmaker negotiating with Mr. McGillard anyways, was it not? I have no relation to the man. Look, uh, all we've done is break into the gaff the other night, like the like what he told us to do. If we'd known there was one of dodgy government secrets involved, we wouldn't have touched it. Okay, so he, Graydon, hired those two to break in. Or... Yeah, they were hired to break in. In the course of it, he tried to take the music box and the music disc. He couldn't do it. He got absolutely clapped. Uh, and then Graydon accident. And then Graydon shot Windy Bank, or the Skulkin brothers shot Windy Bank. It's either or at this point. But oh my god! <laughs> oh, Mister Mister Skulkin. Oh, Mister Odu Governor. What's up? Do I take it that you are now admitted to the crime? That on the night in question, you did indeed gain entry to the premise illegally? And moreover, you did as a party of three, in collaboration with Mr. Graydon here. Is he the third Skulkin brother? We did, Gov! We did! You know what? I love it when the bad guys are helpful, because they know they're already screwed, so they might as well throw everyone else under the bus. Quiet down, please. Uh, what do you say to that, Mr. Graydon? I have no idea what these two ruffians are referring to. Hey, you little rider, getting us mixed up all in this monkey business. You never said nothing about no government secrets. It was supposed to be a straight up job. And you was about the geezer who shot it, was it? Poor bloke didn't have to die, did he? Ugh. Nice to know who your friends are. <laughs> Whatever these men say, deny the accusations. Indeed. Well, I certainly wasn't expecting this little music box to become so significant to the, in the proceedings. However, as it as it has, I will mean it into the court record as evidence. Strange music box only appears to be a play a single note. It was deposited at Winnie Banks two days before the black overcoat. <laughs> Ugh. I'm gonna possibly steal confidential secrets. So is this newspaper heart, heart, newspaper headline accurate? Government communications are being intercepted? How could I possibly know? What do you mean by that? Any important government communications are handled by high-level officers, by specialists. General members of the staff in the, in the station where I work would never be entrusted with sensitive information. Oh no, stop, must say something, stop. Let me guess. <laughs> Chair number five. We regular communication stations officers aren't so lovely, are so lowly as you're being like to believe. A team of us are responsible for setting up and testing the telegraphs used by the ministry. And Mr. Graydon is the team leader. That's fascinating. Graydon, you're, you're fucking yourself over here, big dog. Graydon is skilled operator. Stop. Currently in, in presence of idol. Stop. <laughs> Hmm, do you have access to the equipment used for these confidential uh, communications, Mr. Graydon? So you do have. But well, what of it? The transmissions are always made behind closed doors, so they can't be heard. In any case, all messages are sent in cipher. Normal employees can impossibly understand them. Oh no, stop. Must say something, stop. Mr. Graydon regularly attends meetings with ministry technicians in the ministry communications team. His assistants, he assists them in ensuring that there are no errors in important international communications and he's received the top prize of the cypher cracking convention five years in a row now that's a uh, fascinating <laughs> dude everyone is donkey gone graded right now i kind of feel bad for the guy <laughs> great is highly skilled operator stop currently present vital stop well your idol would appreciate it if you keep your mouth shut she should really pick her model <laughs> idols more carefully I, I tell you, this lawyer's accusations are completely, are completely unfounded. This is such a weird case. Like, I know it's the final case, so it's supposed to be extra, but like... Sheesh! 
The fact that the Skulkin brothers are like dunking on him are so funny. Uh, Gregson's dunking on the Skulkin brothers. The Skulkin brothers are dunking on Gregson at the same time. And now the Skulkin brothers are dunking on Graydon. And, and Jerry number five is also dunking on Graydon. <laughs> They're not? To anyone with a brain, that would be blatantly apparent on listening to the music box for even a few seconds. Of course, of course. Surely it can't be that my learned friend is unfamiliar with Morse code. Oh, please don't give me a lesson. I know about Morse code. Ouch, she looks genuinely shocked at my arrogance. <laughs> it would be more than happy to demonstrate the basics. Oh, no, please. I know Morse code. I played enough Call of Duty zombies to know Morse code by like, the back of my hand. Please don't. Uh, a lesson here in court. Morse code is a continuous series of two dis distinct tones. Tones, you say. Yes, uh, a short dot and a long dash. By combining these in different ways, you can construct letters. I see. For example, this is A. And this is B. But when you listen to the sound produced by this music box, you only hear one tone, don't you? But, but it sounds so similar. The rhythm of it is the same in everything. But there's no discernible meaning in this apparent random sequence of sounds. Well, I mean, he's a decipher, isn't he? <laughs> Your assertion is fundamentally flawed. This is not Morse code. No! <laughs> really? You shouldn't be so surprised. What did I tell you? The music box is nothing but a worthless piece of scrap. Perhaps you might consider studying your subject matter before casting aspersions in future. Ah, uh, stop. Nothing to say, but stop. <laughs> My phone's going off. Please stop. Oh, it's so frustrating, isn't it? Iris? I mean, if the government secrets were somehow being leaked using the music box, so many other things would slide into place so nicely. Could there still be something I haven't considered? I could probably inspect the music box. Would it really be impossible to use this music box somehow to play Morse code? Let's investigate it. Mm, is there a press uh, button? No. Oh. What is it, Runo? I've, I've just noticed something about this music box. It looks like the bottom of it opens as well. <gasps> ah, you're right. Well, come on then. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. All right, then here goes. Look at that, there's another movement on the upside, underside. So does this mean you can set another disc to play back on this side? So I think so, and it looks like the two movements are linked together. They're linked. So if you had two discs, they would play both, they would play back at the same time. This is it. I'm guessing the, the one we have is like the short beeps, and then this is the long beeps. Who would have thought there'd be a second movement under the underside of the box? And this movement is like the other one. Is like the other one. The comb's teeth are, are the same length. So this movement also produced a single tone, like the other one. Yes, it must do. Except the length of the teeth on these two combs is not the same. So the single tone produced by this movement will be different to the single tone we've heard already heard. What? <laughs> Basically, each movement can only be produced a single note. But the notes they produce are different music box that can only play two tones one long and one short oh my god this is the me mechanism that turns the bumps on the disc into the sound isn't it yes these movements is in all thanks to the combs with its teeth that are plucked from the passing bumps usually the teeth on the comb are different lengths so they each one produce a different tone but this comb is very strange all the teeth are exactly the same length well what does that mean it means that no matter which tool, which tooth is plucked by the passing bums, the music box will make the same sound. I've never seen a music box like this before. Yeah, it is strange. A music box that can only play a single note. There has to be some significance to that, surely. Boom, 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 boom. Well, I think it's possible now. There's still every possibility that this box was instrumental in leaking of government secrets. It's the belief of the defense, at least. Objection. Does it please you in some way, my Nepanese friend, to repeat the same line of argument ad infinitum? Infinitum? 
Uh, it's already been established that to be Morse code, two tones are required. Dots and dashes. Yeah, I'm well aware of that. Then what? Well, it would appear that the defense is a hypothesis to put forward. You had better present your ideas at once, Council. And you propose this music box, which appears to produce only a single tone, could have been used to decipher secret messages in the Morse code. This one. Let me hit A first. Okay. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I already know. Yep, I already did that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good gracious! Uh, what, are, what am I looking at here? Another movement on the other side of the box? What? Oh. It appears, my lord, that the two movements are linked together. In other words, you can put two discs in this music box. And the sound of the box will play back at the same time. Good heavens! As the court has heard, Morse code comprises of two tones, a short dot and a long dash. With the second disc in place, this music box could be used to generate Morse code and convey a message. But we don't have a second disc. This is beyond a choke. I'm sorry? This poor excuse for a lawyer has absolutely no evidence to support his claims. Though, of course, and my learned friend were able to present the core with the second disc, that would be another matter. Well, I, uh, I can't at the moment. Hmm. And may I remind the court that as the witness has pointed out, he is not the one in the omnibus with Mr. McGill did two months ago, striking a deal over the disc or discs. Indeed, that was Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. Exactly, I have nothing whatsoever to do with it. Though it has holes, I must admit the argument presented by the defense is much promise. I believe the class examination should continue. Oh, thank God. The link between Graydon and the victim of the omnibus case must be there somewhere. I haven't found it yet. Oh dear, it looks like you need to give your argument more strength, Reno. That's them saying, hey, you're not going to get a penalty because you're right, but like, you're not ready. You will reiterate your testimony if you please, Mr. Graydon. If I must, though I maintain exactly what I did at the start of this pointless cross-examination. <sighs> So low cost brickmaker, no good with it anyways, was that I'm no relation to the man that we know of. But two months ago in the omnibus, Mr. McGill had killed the brickmaker and stole the disc. Mr. Mason was a single man with almost nothing to his name. Seems he lived in an artisan quarter some years ago, but some people there remember little about him. That doesn't make much sense though, does it? How would a humble brickmaker come to acquire secret government information? How indeed. <laughs> there must have been someone else involved behind the scenes in all of this. Someone who acquired the disc and gave it to Mr. Mason. In order to take it to the meeting with Mr. McGillard and negotiate a deal. Dear me. <laughs> ha! You may have it for in for me, sir, but I assure you I have far more class than that. An old brickmaker from an artisan quarter and this well-to-do communications officer. If only I could find some evidence to link the two of them together. Hmm. If nothing more to add on the note, let us return to the witnesses' statements. Testimonies. Hold it! Like Mr. Graydon told you to do, you mean? That's it. Yeah. Uh, who will see? Silly me thought I was gonna get popping over by Nada after all these years, but the Rada ain't dodged a job. The Rada had a dodgy do job for us. Ish. Oh, you're ignoring him? Come on, that's not mean. That's not nice. Let me stop you there, Mr. Skulkin. After all them years, you say? Do you mean to tell me that Mr. Graydon is an acquaintance of yours? 
We're the sociable kind of babies, you know? Sure, let's say Graydon's in old China. Never growl or whatever the freak he just did. Excuse me! There's something wrong, Mr. Skulkin. Eh? No, the other Mr. Skulkin. What? Oh, who, me? When your brother was testifying just now, he said something that seemed to cause you to react. Oh, I was just remembering the old days, like that's all. We used to have a right old laugh together way back when. Together? With Mr. Graydon, you mean? Yeah, with Ash, I mean. You look at him now, it's all fancy whistling flute. And you wouldn't add him and leave it. You wouldn't add him and leave it? But when he was younger, we had it from the poor part of town, just like us. Is that so? But was always the leery one. He had the brains, he had the savvy. Always coming up with smart ideas like we would never even gone through. And always coming up with smart ideas like what we never have gone through in our heads. Go oh, blind, ain't that the truth? Remember Mimbleton and Skull. Remember Mimbleton and Skulkin's milk run. That was a cork, eh? Save it until after the trial. Your reminiscing has no place in this courtroom. And neither does your fruit. Oh, I think he's asked us a question, didn't he? Oh, we was answering. Yeah, we were just doing nothing wrong. Mivleton, huh? Nonetheless, the court is now prepared to accompany you on your trip down memory lane. Council, can you please turn our attention back to the testimony, please? I don't know. Could that sentimental story be relevant somehow? It's in the testimony. <laughs> My lord. Yes, counsel? The brother's last sentimental statement could hold vital information relating to this case. Very well, counsel. I will permit the brothers to supplement their testimony with that detail. Briefly, I hasten to add. Say no more. Skulkin's never skulkin. Mivleton and Skulkin's milk run gore, those were the days. Hold it! I'm sure I'm going to regret asking, but what exactly was that? Some kind of business? Just a little scheme we got going back when we was youngsters. Got a little bit of funny, eh? Really? Silver and fresh milk to the locals, that's what it was all about. That sounds alarmingly legitimate. There must have been a catch. I suppose since we're here, I should ask them to elaborate, but on what? So this business was just a bit of fun, you say? And it was just yourselves and Mr. Graydon involved? Yeah, that's it. Mivleton and Skulkin's milk run, was it? Yeah, that's it. And where did the Mivleton part come from? Oh, right. I thought a clever clogs like you would have worked this one out. That is... <laughs> Enough of this. How much longer are we expected to listen to this drivel? I don't... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me guess. You don't accept anything these two witnesses are saying? Tell me. Why is it that it was only at the mention of the name Mivleton that you decided to interject? Because I... well... You weren't the happiest... You weren't the happiest of homes that one, that one came from? Yeah, this old man was struggling for money so much, it was wife walking down on him. He took the name Graydon then, see? But Ash was always being Mivleton to us. Mivleton. And they used it to be your surname, did it? Of course not! This is all bunkum! I've been a great in ever since I was born! Do you really think you can rely on the testimony of these two thieves, hmm? You're a communications officer attached to the civil service. As such, your personal details will have been thoroughly checked at the time of your appointment. It would be a very simple matter indeed to subpoena those records, Mr. Graydon. Ah! <laughs> Well, uh, it will appear that Mr. and Mr. Skulkin's testimony has been re reliable for once. You were born Ashley Mivel Ashley Mivelton, then. Is that correct? 
Very well. Yeah. So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Middleton. That information could change things and could turn to be extremely important. Absolutely it is. Last name was Middleton years ago. He's a childhood friend of the Skulkin brothers. Graydon, why'd you, why'd you, why'd you, you know, if you just cooperated with your, your old friends here, this would, you wouldn't be in this situation, bro. All of a sudden, we seem to be up on our next and serious matters of national security. Although all this talk about interception of security, of secret government messages is still conjecture at this stage. It would explain a number of things, though, wouldn't it? The negotiations Ginny overheard at the Omnibus two months ago? The break-in at Windybinks? But the trouble is, it wasn't Mr. Graydon and the Omnibus with Mr. McGilded. No, that was Mr. Mason, the brickmaker who was so horribly murdered. Hmm, if only there was some link between the two men somehow. <laughs> I know, but Mr. Graydon's testimony seems to be air watertight as ever. I wonder if the key to us making headway with the cross-examination here could be those two brothers. All right, Skulkins, I appreciate your help. You literally solved the case for us. Thank you. Mr. Ashley Middleton, tell me, why do you try to hide your former name from the court? Because I haven't gotten by that name for years. It means nothing to me. No, I don't think that's the real explanation at all. The truth is, you had a reason to hide that name. Explain yourself, please, counsel. I have here the notes from the Omnibus case, my lord. And as we all know, the victim, the man who now understand, who we now understood to have been negotiating with Mr. McGilded. Yes, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker? That's right. Only Mason wasn't his surname at all. It was his given name. His full name is Mason Middleton. M Mil Middleton? Do, do, do you mean to say... Saints alive! Mr. Ashley Middleton, is it not the case that the brickmaker Mr. Mason Middleton was your father? Ugh, I, I don't... As I believe I mentioned earlier, your family history will have been thoroughly checked when you join the civil service. And it really would take no time at all for the court to subpoena those records. Gah. Truth is, you have been illegally acquiring highly confidential government information. Hold on, let me take a sip of the sauce. <laughs> and selling it on Mr. McGillard in collaboration with your father. No! <laughs> ah. <laughs> New facts and evidence unveiled by the cross examination of this witness. I'll come together to reveal the truth. The truth, you say. That you collaborated with your own father, Mr. Mason Middleton, in illegal dealings with Magnus McGilded. By dint of this music box, you mean, counsel? Yes, stealing information being sent in secret government communications and selling it to Mr. McGilded. Mr. Graydon concocted this elaborate scheme of using two music boxes to encode the information. As presumably a safety measure against the information falling into the wrong hands. And a very effective one. I shouldn't have given this scheme any, any credence whatsoever. But the deal with Mr. McGill that went sour and the brickmaker met his end. Yeah, but with but before he was arrested, McGill did manage to temporarily dispose of the stolen disc at the pawnbroker. Then, having learned of the situation, you appeared at Winniebanks two days ago. In an attempt to recover the two articles Mr. McGill that had placed in, in pawn there. But that attempt failed. One of the discs was seized by the police, and the other, you never found. So that same night, you enlisted the help of the Skulkin brothers and broke into the pawn brokery. This time, determined to recover the second disc. Are, are you suggesting that the second disc was inside the music box? Eh? We, we never knew nothing about that. On the night that Mr. Windy Pink was killed. 
Oh, dun, 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 dun. oh my god, I'm so I'm so in right now, dude. The intruders to the pawn broker touched one item and one item alone. The music box. Is rather an ingenious demonstrated using the two prints from the security cameras indeed. So, the question that naturally begs question answering is this. Why was the only why was that why was only that one article disturbed? The answer is obvious because it contained the second disc, which the intruder was desperate to retrieve. Since if it were to fall into the hands of the police, it would be proof of his high treason. Well, Mr. Graydon, do you deny that all of this actually began on the fateful night two months ago? I, 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 I refuse to accept any of this nonsense. Sir. There appears to be blood seeping through the sleeve on your jacket. What? Ah! Oh, ho, ho, ho. two nights ago. We know that the three shots are fired at the scene of the crime in Windy Banks Pawn Brokery. One took the life of the pawnbroker himself. One struck the pouch around Mr. Shom's waist. And the final bullet... struck the calendar in the wall of the shop, having first pierced the arm of one of the intruders. Mr. Graydon, that wound on your arm that you seem to be trying to hide, it's a bullet wound, isn't it? He's got us now, my old China. Time to call it quits and croak, I, and croak, I reckon. Don't acknowledge my presence there under any circumstances whatsoever. Those were my terms, remember? And I paid you handsomely to comply. Clearly I was a fool to think I could trust someone to come back slum thieves. Fine, I admit it. I was there in Wendy Banks that night. I paid this pair two guineas to accompany me. And I years noticed I sustained an injury in the course of my adventures. But that's all. I admit to nothing more. Stealing government secrets? Negotiating with Mr. McGilded? As God is my witness, I sure recall nothing of the sort. He's not gonna go down without a fight. Not until I can show hard evidence, I suppose. Nevertheless, the defense has now established a crucial fact. Which is... Well, we know that one bullet was fired from each of the two firearms we had in evidence. The bullet from the Skulkin Brothers gun hit the pouch around Mr. Shum's waist. And the bullet from Mr. Windybank's gun clearly must have been the one that caught Mr. Graydon on the arm. Indeed it must. How can we roll out the possibility that the man shot himself? We can roll out the possibility. And that leads to only one conclusion. Mr. Windybank was shot by a third gun which can only be have been fired by the third intruder. Goodness. That's right, Mr. Graydon. Urgh. The only person who could have possibly have shot Mr. Winniebink that night is you. Hold it. Uh, is that Graydon? <laughs> You little upstart. You made a grave mistake when you when he summoned me here. What? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, as you rightfully say, I was there at the pawnbrokers. I did my best to hide the fact, naturally. I had no intention of ruining the distinguished career I built for myself at the communication station. But did that thought never cross your mind? Did you ever consider did you never consider the possibility? What, what what do you mean? What thought? What possibility? The possibility that if I was there at the scene, I may have witnessed the crucial moment. You see... This makes a key witness in this case, and I have my arms firmly around the neck of your client. What? Is this is really- this is the angle you're going for? 
are you suggesting? I saw it all. I saw the very moment the pickpocket girl pointed the gun at the poor defenseless pawnbroker and shot him. You what? That's certainly one way to try and get out of this. <laughs> Order, order, order. I mean, I think you could should just take your chances and just bolt, dog. Big, big man, just just go. <laughs> just make a run for it. <laughs> well, it would seem we have finally entered the last act of this theatrical, the theoretical trial. Dude, we should have we should have connected them based on the fact that they all missed theater class, bruh. They all should have been in theater. Mr. Graydon. Yeah. I trust you are fully aware of the implications here. If it is shown that your claims is false, you will have incriminated yourself as the killer. Oh, I understand fully. And I must ask you to give your formal testimony once more. You'll explain to the court precisely what you saw at the moment the defendant allegedly shot the victim. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Ooh, this guy's scary. Witness testimony. The moment of the shooting. 